Hey guys, Blazin here. In this video, I want to talk about Metal Hellsinger. This is a game I feel like deserves more attention as I don't see a lot of buzz surrounding this game. This game isn't that old either. It came out last year. Metal Hellsinger is a first person shooter rhythm game and of course, by the title, you listen to metal music as you slay to the beat. This game is best described as Rock Band and Doom mixed together and, well, you get Metal Hellsinger. So that's the brief description about this game. Now let's dive a little deeper on what this game has to offer. Now before we talk about the gameplay, I think the menus alone deserve a lot of praise. Because I think this game has one of the coolest menus I've seen in a long time. Even just entering into the game is awesome. Now navigating through the menus, you've got your typical settings and options. There's also a lot of lore to read through. They will be locked for you though until you first start playing. There's also a mini art book, but I don't recommend looking through it unless, you know, you want to spoil yourself. You can also view the game's cutscenes and even just listening to the music. All this stuff will be locked though until you beat the game first. Which I guess now we can talk about the levels next. So, once again, all the levels will be locked for you when you first start playing, and, well, all you gotta do is play the game in order to progress and unlock the new levels. There's a total of 9 levels, and each level has their own unique song. I also like that each level in this menu is stylized as records. I should also mention that when you first start playing this game, there are 4 different difficulties you can choose from. There's Lamb, which is easy, Goat, which is normal, Beast, which is hard, and Archdevil, which is, uh... Well, I'll be honest, I haven't even tried this difficulty for myself yet. This difficulty is actually locked until you beat the game once. The difficulty icons are also stylized as guitar picks, which is pretty cool. That's pretty much most of what I wanted to talk about in regards to the menus. Now let's talk about the gameplay. Now the gameplay might take a little bit to get used to because it's not like Doom where you can slaughter whenever you want. This is a rhythm game after all, so you gotta attack in sync with the music you hear as you play. Once you get used to the beat though, that's when the game really starts to get fun. Now similar to Doom, you do get your health back by slaughtering enemies, not by shooting them. There's also green crystals scattered throughout the environment that can be destroyed and regain health that way. The game is going to start you off slow and the beat intensity will ramp up as you progress. I think part of the reason why this game may not have gotten a lot of attention is because when watching gameplay, I'm not sure if it looks that interesting to play. I mean there's only very few slaughtering animations to look at. I feel like this is definitely the kind of game you, you'd want to experience for yourself. Continuing talking about the gameplay, the movement options you have feel amazing. You can mainly dash and double jump, but combining these two movement abilities will grant you access to other movement options. For example, if you dash and jump at the same time, you actually glide forward or any direction you want, and even after you do that, you can actually glide again, or you can dash and jump again mid-air after the first glide. Dashing can be done mid-air, and if you dash to the beat, you gain the ability to tackle enemies, which interrupts their attacks. Another important thing to mention is your fury streak at the top of the screen. This is important because that's what keeps the music going, and that also affects your damage output. So as long as that shit is at 16, you're dealing your maximum damage output. Your fury streak goes down when you take too much damage. Coming back to the menus real quick, let's talk about the weapons you can equip yourself with. And once again, I really like the style of this menu. First off, you have Paz. He's a skull that's important to the game's narrative. He shoots out fireballs that deal really low damage, but he's useful for keeping your fury up, even outside of combat. You can also charge up his attack and launch up to a burst of three fireballs instead of one. Landing all three on weaker enemies will crystallize them, and the next time you shoot them, they explode, 
dishing out a lot of damage around other demons. One thing I should mention is that each weapon, including Paz, has their own ultimate. So for Paz, his ultimate strikes down lightning to multiple enemies, heavily weakening them for easy kills. Next is Terminus. Now I should mention, both Paz and Terminus are permanent, so you'll always have these two in your arsenal. Terminus is a sword that's mostly used for slaughter kills, but when actually using the sword, every third strike you hit on the beat will slice through enemies. As for Terminus' ultimate, well now you get to slice through enemies on every beat, and you get a cool guitar rift as well. Next, let's talk about Persephone. This is the game's pump action shotgun, so not much to talk about. However, Persephone's ultimate is awesome, and has definitely saved my life on multiple occasions on higher difficulties. Because this weapon's ultimate launches a fucking fireball that can burn through enemies. Finally, let's talk about the Hounds, and these will be the last weapons I covered. The Hounds are pretty much going to be your go-to, at least they are for me. The Hounds are very cool dual revolvers that deal great damage as long as you're accurate. Similar to Paz, these weapons are also great for setting up enemies for slaughter kills, if you really need the help. One small detail I like about these revolvers is that their reload animations are very unique, as new rounds just magically float into the gun cylinders. That's really unique, and I don't think I've ever seen revolvers reload like that before. Now as for the Hound's ultimate, it's my favorite. You spawn another clone of yourself temporarily acting as a stationary turret. Now your clone won't take the load of enemies off you, but you'll still be getting some assistance. And I think that's gonna do it for the gameplay. There's still a bit more to talk about, but I'll show you the rest of the arsenal, which you'll have to earn for yourself, bitch. Next, let's briefly touch on the game's story. The story of Metal Hellsinger is very simple. You play as a female demon known as, well, unknown. The reason why you're playing as her, and why she's so pissed, is because her voice was stolen, so she can't talk. Her voice was stolen by a demon asshole known as the Red Judge. She's the one who stole Unknown's voice. And that's the very basic plot of the game. I'm not going to say any more because more stuff happens, and especially when you get to the end. I encourage you to play through this game as I think it's a lot of fun, and I'm going to make a very bold claim here, but I think the final boss of this game is better than Doom Eternal's boss fight against the Icon of Sin. There, I said it. Fucking fight me. You see, the thing is, just because the unknown couldn't break those magic gates herself don't mean they can't be broken. And just because Judge stole her voice. After you beat the game though, you'll have access to all the weapons, music, and levels. Then if you look at previous levels, you'll see these titles on the records. These are basically challenges for you to complete, and if you complete these challenges, you get access to these things called sigils. Sigils are essentially perks you can play around with, and you can equip up to two at a time. Now let's talk about what's bad about Metal Hellsinger, at least for me. There's only one bad thing I could say about this game. And that's the fact that there's a FUCKING option to turn down the volume. WHO THE FUCK WANTS TO TURN DOWN THE fuck? I'm kidding. It's the fact that at the end of each level, you fight this boss. The problem is that this is the only boss fight throughout the whole game, with the exception of the tutorial level and the final boss. Like I said, the final boss is actually epic as hell. This thing is called an aspect, and at least each time you fight it, the battle arena does change, and their attack patterns vary a little bit as you progress. Their music themes are also very identical, with only a few variations. They also have different skins depending on the environment you're on. So yeah, overall these aspect boss fights are probably one of, if not the only weakest part of the game.
And I guess the last couple things to talk about are the enemies you'll be fighting, which I'll be quick. First we have the marionettes. These are basically the imps of the game, except they don't throw fireballs. These things are called cambians. They are your standard foot soldiers that shoot fireballs and are able to throw grenades. Next we have behemoths. These are your hell knights of the game. They're able to leap great distances and able to ground pound your ass. And they also have one arm that's shaped like a meat hook. And lastly, I'll talk about the stalkers. These green demons are quick, have very fast lunging slash attacks up close, and have the ability to teleport. They can also shoot fast green electric projectiles, and they have a lot more health compared to the other demons I covered. Actually, I lied. There's one more demon I want to mention that, in my opinion, slowed the pace of the game down way too much. And that's the Shield Cambion. Similar to the regular Cambion, except this time it has a shield that protects them very well, and their arm cannon is fully automatic. So from my experience, this is the only enemy type I truly dislike. Like I said, I think these guys slowed the pace of the game down way too much, and the only way I take these guys down is use the Terminus Sword, because the third hit of each beat is able to slice through the shield. But that means I'm not dealing a lot of damage because only the third hit of each attack is slicing through. Unless I'm hitting the sides or even his back. And I'm also risking my own life because this motherfucker will attempt to shoot at me with his fully automatic cannon. Which fucking melts your health down if you take too many shots, especially on beast difficulty. Not to mention that you'll be fighting more than one in a room. So there can be like fucking four of them and I just get really annoyed. I hope in a future update these shield cambions get nerfed because just these guys alone can determine on which levels I want to replay and on what difficulty to play them on. Alright, for real, this is going to be the end of the video and I'm going to end it by, well, showing off the music. And there might be some familiar singers in this game. Take a listen. And I think that's gonna be it for this video. Overall, I really enjoyed this game. Sometimes I do come back to it just to chill, and I encourage you to play this game as well, especially if you like Doom. I had a ton of fun making this one. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and share this video with your friends. Subscribe if you enjoy the content on this channel, and links to my shit are down in the description. And until next time, peace.